Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem minimum number of swaps to make the string balanced, a problem from last night's leak code contest. And I wish I could have uploaded it last night, but sorry about that. So let's do it this morning. We are given a zero index string S of even length N. That's important. It's even length because there are going to be exactly half of the characters are going to be opening brackets and exactly half of the characters are going to be closing brackets. And they give us some criteria on if a string is balanced, if and only if, you know, either of these three criteria apply. But this definition of a balanced string is actually pretty, it's pretty much exactly what you would expect when it comes to balancing parentheses or balancing brackets, right? That definition up above, it, maybe it just overcomplicates things for some people, but basically whatever you think is valid for brackets is valid. So this is valid, but if we had it in the opposite order, if we had it like this, uh, this is not valid, right? Like these brackets don't close each other, so this is invalid. Now we're given a string, it could be valid or invalid. You know, this string is invalid, the example string is invalid as well. We want to know what's the minimum number of swaps, and we can swap any two characters in this uh, input string. What's the minimum number of swaps to make the string S balanced? And I'm going to be showing you how to solve this problem in linear time and O of 1 memory. That means no extra memory is going to be needed for this problem, but it's kind of tricky. This is an easy solution to implement, but it's not easy to come up with. So let's explain how we can come up with a solution like this. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you find the video helpful. And consider checking out my Patreon where you can support the channel if you would like to. It's completely optional. You are not required. But thank you so much to the 30 Patreons that I currently have. Thank you for supporting the channel. Now let's first try to actually understand this problem. So let's say we were given an input string like this. How many, what's the minimum number of swaps to make this balance? Well, what's the problem here? This middle portion is pretty balanced to me, right? So what's the problem? Well, when we start, the first character in the string is a closing bracket. Now that's not good because the first character should never be the closing bracket, right? Like that just doesn't make sense. What exactly is it closing? There was nothing open in the first place. And this is true, you know, if we just keep adding closing brackets, that just makes the problem worse because now we have four of them and we never closed anything, right? Nothing was ever open to close in the first place. So taking a look at this single closing bracket, we're definitely going to need to perform a swap. Now, the good thing is we have exactly half opening brackets and half closing brackets. So we just have to rearrange these. We don't have to change this. We just have to swap it with something else. Of course, we're going to swap it with an opening bracket, which we know we have have an extra opening bracket somewhere, right? That's implied because there's half and half. Now we don't actually have to perform this swap and we don't have to know which ones we actually have to swap. We just have to know what's the minimum number. Of course, we'll have to make at least one swap because we have this opening or this closing bracket. Now, then we go through the rest of the string. We see an opening bracket. That's fine. So we had one closing and then we had one opening. Now this is our second closing bracket, right? And at this point, actually, th this closing bracket actually does have an opening bracket to match with it. So at this point, once we've gotten to this point, we've seen three characters, three brackets, we have two closing brackets, and we have one opening bracket, right? We don't want to have more closing brackets than opening brackets. But at this point, we only have one closing bracket that's, you know, mismatched or whatever. And then once we get to the last character, of course, we're completely balanced Two closing brackets two opening brackets. So what I'm kind of getting at with this explanation is that we're going to be keeping track of how what's the number of extra closing brackets that we have. That's what we're going to be keeping track of at any given point in time. Right. So how the algorithm is going to work is we're going to scan through starting at the beginning of the string and then scanning through each uh, character, we're going to keep track of at any given point in time, what is the number of extra closing brackets we have? Because if we have extra closing brackets at any points, that's what determines if we need to perform a swap or not. And then at the end, we'll know what's the maximum number of swaps, what's the minimum number of swaps we need to perform to make this string balanced. So let's, let's actually start with a simpler example than this one up above that I have. Let's start with the actual balanced example. Let's say we had two opening brackets and then two closing brackets. What would we do? Okay, we'd start at the first uh, 
opening bracket, right? And initially our extra close count is zero. So then we get to the opening bracket. What would we do with extra close count? Well, we'd have to set it to negative one because we don't have any extra closing brackets. We have extra opening brackets. We'd get to the second opening bracket. Yep. Now we have two opening brackets. So negative two means we have two opening brackets, not closing brackets. Then we'd get to our first closing bracket. So we'd add one to this. So we'd say, okay, now we have negative one. That means we have one extra opening bracket. Then we'd get to the last opening bracket and then we'd add one again then this would be set to zero that means at the end we'd finally have zero extra closing brackets that means it's perfectly balanced which is what we expect at the end and at, what was at any given point in time if you were paying attention what was the maximum number of extra closing brackets we had well the maximum was zero because it only went negative so since we never had any extra closing brackets that means we didn't have to do anything which makes sense right because look this is a balanced string so of course we're not gonna have to do any swaps so in the end our answer is gonna be zero we don't have to perform any swaps now let's take a look at an example where we actually will have to perform some swaps so you can see we already start out with the first character we have a closing bracket so what are we going to do we're going to add one because we add one every time we get a closing bracket we subtract one minus one every time we see an opening bracket so add one we see a second closing bracket so add another value two we see a third closing bracket so let's add another one three so so far we have done three close or yeah closing brackets so this is our max so far, right? So let's keep track of that this time actually formally. So the max closing bracket so far is three. Then we get to an opening bracket and then we get to a second opening bracket and a third opening bracket. So we have to subtract three with after those three opening brackets. So now we're gonna have zero. Now we're gonna have zero uh, extra closing brackets, right? Cause we just had three uh, open brackets, but that doesn't change our maximum, right? We know at one point, at one point in time, which was over here, right? We had three extra closing brackets. So that's all we care about. What was the maximum at any given point in time? Now you can see we actually have one more closing bracket. So this uh, zero is now gonna be negative one. And then we get a, or that was the opening bracket. This is a closing bracket. So then we add one again, and now we're back to zero. So our max at any given point in time actually happened to be three, right? At any given point, we had three extra uh, closing brackets. So does that mean our answer equals three? Are we gonna be returning the value three? Well, three is the minimum number of swaps we have to make to make this balanced. But let me show you what if we took this bracket and swapped it with this one and we took this bracket and swapped it with this one? Well, what would we have in that case? Well, we'd have something that looks like this. And this is pretty balanced to me, isn't it? This is actually a balanced string. So I just showed you, it's actually possible to do this in two swaps, right? Two swaps is enough, not three. Why is that the case? Let me just explain to you. So we noticed how at this point in time, right? We had three extra closing brackets. What happens if I make a single swap? What happens if I make a single swap like this one? If I swap these two, then see we had three closing brackets. That changes to being one open bracket and then two closing brackets, right? So getting a little messy, but hopefully you can see this part, right? We have three brackets here, one open and then two close, right? Previously, we had three extra closing brackets. Over here, how many do we have? Do we have two extra closing brackets? No, we actually have only a single one extra closing bracket because when we did the swap we took three closing brackets and turned it into two closing brackets but we also changed one of the brackets to being an open bracket which cancels out one of the closing brackets right like these two brackets over here they cancel each other out and then we're left with a single closing bracket what i'm saying is each swap actually gets rid of two extra closing brackets so in the end if we had three as our maximum right three closing brackets as our maximum what we actually want to do is divide that by two or in other words we actually want to take three plus one and then divide it by two which gives us the value two because every operation will get rid of two extra closing parentheses so in one operation we can take three and bring it down 
to one. And then with another operation, we can take one and bring it down to zero, which will give us zero extra closing brackets. So that was really long and confusing, but I hope it makes sense because the code is going to be really short. And I think the code will make even more sense because it takes a lot to actually get to this solution, like I mentioned, but coding it up is actually very easy. We only do a single pass, no extra memory, linear time, and you just have to remember this simple rule of keeping track of extra closing parentheses and then dividing it by two at the end. With that being said, we can now jump into the code. Okay, so now let's get into the code. And like I said, we're going to keep track of two variables, which is the closing count, the extra closing count, in other words, and we're going to be keeping track of whatever the maximum of that happens to be. Let's just call it max close. So they'll both initially be zero. Next, like I mentioned, it's going to be a linear scan going through every single character in the input string. They could be one of two values. It could be an opening uh, bracket, which means, you know, we're balanced. And it could, the else case is if it's a closing bracket. Now, if it's a if it's an open bracket, we're going to take closing and decrement it by one because that means we don't have any extra closing brackets, right? Now, if we do have a closing bracket, we're going to increment our extra closing count by one. And on every single iteration, we want to know what's the max closing count. So we're always going to be looking for that. So we'll take the max of close and the max of uh, max close. And then at the end, right, we have our max closing count. Remember, what do we want to do with it? We don't want to just straight return the max closing count. We want to add one to the max closing count and then divide it by two integer division, which is, takes two slashes in Python. This is the entire solution because this is the max, the minimum number of swaps we will need because we'll need at least one swap to get rid of two extra closing parentheses. So this is the entire solution but I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon. The link will be in the description below, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.